Good morning, my wonderful students. I'm happy to be on this platform today, and I hope you are all happy to see me. I remain Mrs. Ayewole Alaba Adepeju. Today, we are going to be talking about the first topic for third term, and our first topic for today is family life education. Family life education. What is family life education? Family life education is the interaction that exists between parents and their teenage ones. That is the communication with your parents. The way you relate with your parents, your younger ones, your senior ones, the way you talk to them, the way you ask them questions and how they relate with you. These and many more are what is known as family life education. <coughs> For the purpose of this class today, we shall be looking into the implications of teenage pregnancy. The implications of teenage pregnancy. What are the implications of teenage pregnancy? But before we go into that, I would like to share the objective of today's class with you. The objective of today's class are, one, you must be able to lease the implications of teenage pregnancy, that is, the effect of teenage pregnancy. And number two is, you must be able to identify facts and means about pregnancy. Fact means the truth and means, means lies or superstitions about pregnancy. What is pregnancy? Pregnancy is a process that occurs when a new individual develops in a womb or uterus. When a new individual develops in a womb or the uterus. Pregnancy that occurs in girls between the ages of 10 and 19 years is called teenage or adolescence pregnancy, which are most times unwanted and expected, meaning once you get pregnant at this age, they are referred to as teenage pregnancy or adolescent pregnancy. And most times they are not intended. From my pictures, you see students like your age that are already pregnant. In fact, they are wearing their if you are pregnant at this stage here, nobody will admit you into any school. Even private schools will not admit you because you cannot be pregnant and you are in a class. You are a form of distractions to other students in that school. You'll be the talk of town, the talk of community. When they see you enter the school gate, everybody will be pointing at you. So once you are pregnant at this age, your education will stop. Now, let's see the implication of teenage pregnancies. What do we mean by implications? Implications are the effect of teenage pregnancy. We have several implications of teenage pregnancy. One is unsafe abortion. Unsafe abortion means when a teenage girl is pregnant, she's looking for a mean to get the pregnancy terminated. And in doing so, you might visit a quack doctor or nurse, which will carry out this procedure on, on you. And this is very unsafe and can lead to what is known as earth risks. What are the earth risks involved in teenage pregnancy? When you are pregnant at this age, your hip is too narrow for the passage of the baby. So the next thing is you have a cesarean done by a doctor, a qualified doctor where they can bring forth the baby. And there are so many earth risks involved in this. One can die in the process of, of, of having a cesarean section. Another implication of teenage pregnancy is termination of education. Like I said earlier on, if you are pregnant at this age, your education is terminated. There's no school, will, there's no school that will admit you. So your education stop at this stage. Another implication of teenage pregnancy is feeling insecure. Because you are pregnant, you will be feeling ashamed 
You will not want to come out. You always want to stay indoor. People will not want to be your friends. This, your, your friends will stop visiting you. You'll be feeling insecure of yourself. You are not sure of what to do next. Another implication of teenage pregnancy is feeling of guilt. Because you are feeling insecure, you'll be thinking of so many things. How did I get this? How did I involve myself in it, in this? What happened to me? What am I thinking of? These are many questions who keep popping into your head. That means you are feeling guilty of the action of what has happened to you. And this can lead to first or early marriage. Once you are pregnant, your parents might not allow you to stay with them again. They'll get the boy or the man that impregnated you to come and marry you off. Because they don't want people to come to their house and see you nurse a baby where you are, when you are supposed to be in school. While others are in school, you are at home nursing a baby or a pregnancy. So the next thing left for your parent is to force you into early marriage, which can lead to destruction of lifespan and career. Presently, you are in GSS3. I know many of you are thinking of what you want to be in future. I want to be a doctor, a lawyer, a pilot, engineer, or even a teacher like me. But once you are pregnant, all this your life plan and career goals will stop. They'll be disrupted. You can no further. Because when you are supposed to be in class learning, you are at home, nursing a newborn baby. And because you are at home, you become lonely and depression will set in. Nobody to visit you. You are not visiting anybody. You cannot even relate well with your parents and family. You are hurt to yourself. You think alone. You solve your problem alone. Your thoughts are with you alone. Nobody to share your thoughts with. And once you are feeling lonely, depression will set in. And when you are depressed, you'll be thinking of a way out, which, leads, which can lead to loss of life. Some people can take drug or alcohol that can end their life because they are depressed of being pregnant. And once this sets in, it can lead to poverty, low income, and economic dependency. You are left alone with your thoughts. The boy that implicates you, is too will be dropped out of school because you cannot be out of school and he is in school. Both of you are dropped out. He will be looking for how to take care of you and you too will be looking for how to take care of yourself. You can result in doing things that you don't want to do, like maybe selling of pure water just to keep that for yourself and the unborn child. You will go and rent an apartment that is of low standard just because you want to keep your shape. You guys want to keep your head. You become economic dependence on your own. How you fit, how you clothe, and every other things are left to you and the boy or the man that impregnated you. So for these many reasons and more, you are supposed to abstain from any sexual immoralities. So you will not be going through all these implications at this early stage. Might and means and facts about pregnancy. Means means lies. Why fact means truth about pregnancy. For the purpose of this class, I'm only going to give you two examples, one for means and one for fact. Fact is an attempt can make you pregnant. Some people will tell you that ah, you cannot be pregnant if you have sex once. It is a big lie. If you have sex today and it is just the first time, you can end up being pregnant. So it is a fact that once can actually get you pregnant. One of the means of pregnancy is that caffeine is good for you. No, caffeine is not good for you. It can only be taken in small quantity because many doctors believe that it contains some components that are not good for your health. Another fact about pregnancy is 
you must be vaccinated against some diseases and infection once you know you are pregnant. Once you start, once you start attending your tenanta classes, you are going to be vaccinated against some diseases and infection to protect you and the unborn baby. These and many more are minds and facts about pregnancy. Now let's see the symptoms and signs of pregnancy. There are many symptoms and signs of pregnancy depending on the individual, the hormones, and the well-being of a person. Some people feel these symptoms. They, they, they feel it happen to them. Why in so many? They, didn't feel, they don't feel anything. One of the signs of pregnancy is headache. We are always having light headache once you get up from bed in the morning, especially in the morning. Even after taking medication, you are still having slight headache. It is a sign of pregnancy. Light bleeding and spotting is also a sign of pregnancy. This is known as implantation. But once this light bleeding and spotting becomes too much, it is advised you visit your doctor for a proper evaluation. Breast changes is also a sign of pregnancy. Your breast became, will, be, will be fuller, will be softer and more firm. It is a sign of pregnancy. Another sign of pregnancy is fatigue. You woke up in the morning feeling tired. Sometimes you don't want to get out of bed. You don't want to eat. You don't even want to have your bed. You just want to remain on the spot. It is fatigue. We also have what is known as food craving. Once you eat rice, you feel like eating pounded yam. After pounded yam, the next thing you'll be thinking of, I want a cup of ice cream. That is food craving. You are always eating, eating. And mind you, some people will be telling you, ah, the way you are feeling, just continue eating. No. Some even tell you, will be telling you that you are eating for two. You are not eating for two. You eat for the required calorie needed per day. Another sign of pregnancy is nausea and morning sickness. Once you get up from bed, the next thing you do is run to a toilet. You want to empty your tummy. You want to vomit everything that is inside. In some, it is only maybe once in a day in the morning. While in some female, it is any time in the morning, in the afternoon, in the night, any time. Mood swing is another symptoms of pregnancy. At times you'll be happy, you'll be full of life, you want to play around, you want to talk to your friends, and sometimes you just want to keep to yourself. You don't want to talk to anybody. You want to stay indoor, you want to lock yourself all day. It's, mood, it's a mood swing and it's one of the signs of pregnancy. Frequent urination is another one, especially at night. You'll be going to toilet more than required, three, four times before morning is a sign of pregnancy. And the last but not the least is missed period. People believe that once you miss your period, it is a sign that you are pregnant. But in some, it is not so. It might be due to natural reasons or medical problems. But once you miss your period, go to the hospital where a nurse or a doctor can carry a proper evaluation on you. And this can be done through your urine, or your blood. These and many more are the signs and symptoms of pregnancy, which differs in different individuals. Preventions of teenage pregnancy. How can one prevent teenage pregnancy? Number one is by abstaining. That is abstinence. And what does abstinence mean? Abstinence means self-denial from some things like food, alcohol, and some other things. But in this case, it is total abstinence from sex and sexual activities, kissing, romancing, and others. For your age, you are supposed to abstain 100% abstinence from sex and sexual activities. Another way of preventing teenage pregnancy is family planning. This occurs in married couples. This will give them chance to space their children, give them chance to manage their family the way they want it. And another one is contraceptive, the use of tablets. 
to prevent pregnancy. The purpose of this class and because of your age, the one that is of paramount importance is the number one, which is abstinence. Number two and three are meant for married couples. Number two and three are meant for married couples. So for your age, abstinence is the answer. For more on this topic, you can go to the visit the school website and download the lesson notes. It is a comprehensive note where you can read more and understand on this topic. Please remember to do your assignment and submit online. And also, you can also read more from our recommended test, which is Basic Science for Junior Secondary School, Book 3, written by G.O. Omotu Yole. Thank you and God bless you. We have come to the end of today's teaching. Please do your assignment and submit online. Thank you and see you in next class. This is the end of first week teaching, which is the implication of teenage pregnancy. You are welcome once again to the topic of today, Family Life Education 2. Family Life Education 2 is a with two topic in this term. I remain the same, Mrs. Ayewole Alaba Adepeju. For the purpose of today's teaching, we shall be looking into the meaning and types of abortion. The meaning and types of abortion. But before we go further, let's see the learning objective for today's class. That is what we are supposed to know at the end of this teaching. Number one is you must be able to define and list the type of abortion. Two, state the reason for abortion. Three, list the consequences of unsafe abortion. Four, mention ways of preventing abortion. And number five, where to go to if you find yourself in this situation, that is where to seek help. What is abortion? Abortion is the ending of pregnancy by removing an embryo or fetus before it can survive outside the uterus. An abortion that occurs spontaneously is known as miscarriage. An abortion that occurs spontaneously is known as miscarriage. While an abortion that is caused purposely is referred to as induced abortion or induced miscarriage. Types of abortion. We have different types of abortion. The first one is the abortion pill. This is a tablet that is used to end a pregnancy, which can only be sold to an adult under strict medical condition and by registered medical personnel. That is, this pill can only be sold to an adult. If you go to any pharmacy and ask for this type of pill, it can never be given to you, except and with a medical prescription. Number two types of abortion is true surgical operation. This involves a minor operation and it's of two types. <clears throat> Excuse. The first one is <clears throat> vacuum aspiration. This is done with local anesthetic, sedation and general anesthetic. Why the second one is through dilation and evacuation. This can only be carried out between, if the pregnancy is between 15 and 24 weeks, during a, using a general anesthetic and a faucet to bring out the baby. Like I said, we, I said we have two types of abortion, the abortion pill and the surgical abortion. What are the reasons for aborting? Why do you want to abort that baby? One might be due to a failed contraceptic. For, for a woman that is using a, a contraceptive pill, at a point in time, it's my failed. And because you are not ready for that baby at that present moment, you go for an option of aborting it. Secondly, is financial status. Like in a family, a married couple has five children and they discover that the woman is pregnant again. 
and because they don't have enough money to even take care of the five on ground, they are, with their agreement, they can visit a doctor for an abortion. That is one of the reasons of going for an abortion, that is financial status. Number three is marital status and society norm. We believe and we know that is, if you are pregnant, before you become pregnant, you must be married. That is our social norm. If you are pregnant outside marriage, people look at you in one way, which you will not like. So because you don't like the people, the way people look at you, some women might go for the option of abortion. They might be a woman or a, they might be a woman, but because they are not yet married, they are likely to go for abortion. Another reason for going for abortion is relationship issue. We are in a relationship with a man. There is a mutual agreement that at the end of the day, both of you are going to get married. But along the line, the relationship crash and you are already pregnant. The next thing for you is to go for the abortion because you don't want to have a baby outside wedlock or that does not have a father. These and many more are reason for abortion. We have medical condition, we have age, we have abuse, we have female forticide. What does female forticide mean? Maybe in your family, you have five girls already. Your children are girls, all true. And when you are pregnant again, you discover that the next one is a girl. And you don't want it because you don't want to be a laughing stock. Then you go for an abortion because it is a female again. And the last but not the least is not wanting to expand the family. Yes, like I said earlier on, you and your husband have agreed that we are going to have three children and you have had the three of already. So once you discover that you are pregnant and you don't want to expand the family, it is a reason to go for abortion. These and many more are reason why people go for abortion, but they are not meant for you because in the first place, you are not supposed to be pregnant at this stage. What are the consequences of unsafe abortion? That is the effect of unsafe abortion. Number one is ill health. You'll be sick. You are always sick. Today hospital, today tomorrow hospital. Ill health because of what you have done. Another one is infection. If you go for an abortion in a, in a place that is not well registered, and I mean an hospital that is not registered with quack, Medical, medical personnel, there's every reason that along the line you'll be infected. Number three consequences is injury to genital organs. If you visit a quack doctor or nurse for this, definitely they can, they can injure your genital organs. Number four is incomplete abortion. You believe you have taken pills, that everything is cleared out. But no, there might still be blood that is still formed in the womb. So it is referred to as incomplete abortion. All this mentioned above can, at the end of the day, lead to death. So that is why it is advised never to do an abortion because of the consequences, the effect that it will have on your person. How do we prevent abortion? That is ways of preventing abortion. Number one, Government should make abortion illegal. Only country that their government made abortion illegal. Once you go for an abortion, you are either arrested or sentenced to life or a particular years in prison. So government should make abortion illegal. Once abortion is legal, and you know if you are pregnant, you face the consequences then you stay away from sexual activities. Another way of preventing pregnant, um, abortion is abortion pills should not be sold over the counter, especially to person younger than 21 years. Yes, if you remember, I said something about this, that abortion pill should not be sold to teenage girls. It should be sold to an adult under strict medical condition. In fact, before you buy any abortion pill, you must go with a prescription from a registered hospital. 
before it can be sold to you. So people will not just be going to pharmacy or uh, hospitals and be taking drugs anyhow, which at the end of the day can kill them. The last is teenagers should be enlightened on the dangers of a caution. Teenagers should be enlightened. We should talk to you more and more, advise you on what to do. A counseling section should be run in the school every time to talk to you about the dangers of abortion. If you know this, you will not involve yourself in any sexual morality. Where do you find help over unwanted pregnancy? That is, where should you go to? This involves the provision or seeking assistance or support in order to find solution or relief from a problem or make situation more bearable. Here, we can seek help from health practitioners, that is the doctors, the nurses, the pharmacists, from religious leaders, that is our pastors, our imams, and also from our parents and guardians, and especially from trusted, experienced adults. From trusted, experienced adults. That is, if a teenager becomes pregnant and you, you have ruled out abortion, where can you find help? You can find help by talking to your parents, your guardian, your religious leader, the doctors or nurse, and a trusted, experienced adult, which will enlighten you more about the pregnancy. We have come to the end of today's teaching, but before I go, I would like to refer you to the uploaded notes online via the school website. Please download it, write your note, it's a comprehensive note, and do the assignment that follows and submit via the school web website. You can also learn or read more on this topic by using our recommended text, Basic Science for Junior Secondary School Book 3 by G.O. Omotu Yole. We have come to the end of today's session. You very well. And this is the end of week two topic, which is family life education two. Under the subheading types of abortion. See you next class. And please remember to stay indoor and keep safe. Thank you. God bless you. <laughs>